الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أيها الأحباب continuing on in our series in the study of the short kalima that our Sheikh Sheikh Ibrahim al-Rahayli حفظ الله تعالى that he gave regarding the importance of or the encouragement to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the fawaid we've already mentioned and the importance of studying this treatise is it gives us a way of dealing with the fitna that we experience by seeing Ahl Sunnah being few in numbers around the world, although growing with Lillah Alhamd, and that we see a lot of people in opposition to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and people who attack Ahl Sunnah and we see that there are divisions amongst Ahl Sunnah this is not inherent to the minhaj or the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but these divisions do occur and we have to have a medicine for dealing with it, which brings up where the Shaykh left off, where he said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, from the Sunnah is the long hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu regarding the characteristics of Hajj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which states, I've left you with something that if you hold on to it, you will not be misguided, the Book of Allah. Also in the well-known hadith of Irbad, Bin Sariya radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, I advise you to fear Allah and listen and obey the, uh, the leader even if he was an Ethiopian slave. For verily the one who lives after me will see many differences. Therefore it is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifat cling to them with your molar teeth, cling to it with your molar teeth and beware newly invented matters for every Innovation is bid'ah, and every bid'ah leads astray. So again, from this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we see that it's an ilaj, it's a medicine, it's a cure for our differences. If we bring our differences, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ وَسَاكُمْ إِلَى آخِرَ آيَةٍ where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al kareem fa in tanaza'tum fi shay'in fa ridu ila Allah if you disagree about something then return it back to Allah and his messenger if in kuntum tu'minuna billah if you really believe if you believe in Allah wal yawm al akhir then that's that's best for you if you truly believe in Allah, wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning following, you, you worship Allah, and you follow the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You believe that that's the best path, and that's a surat al-mustaqeem, and that is right guidance. Then you will return whatever you disagree about back to the sunnah. And how do we return it back to the sunnah? How do we return it back to Allah wa Rasul? We turn it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by going back to the Quran for the answers. Did what I say, is it in accordance with the Quran and the sunnah? Did what he say, is it in accordance with Quran and sunnah? When you have differences. And returning it back to the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam is that you return it back to his sunnah. What has been established as a sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through his statements, through his actions, through the things he uh, allowed and agreed to, and his manners, and his, uh, his mannerisms, and his characteristics, uh, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So that's returning it back. That's that, uh, uh, that medicine for us when we have disagreements. So never forget to make sure that you try to benefit from uh, when you have differences, to take it back to Kitab al-Sunnah. And of course, 
the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And this brings up the next point. The Sheikh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, the Salaf used to put immense emphasis on this. And there are countless statements about following the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and warning against that which goes against that. From those statements is the saying of Umar, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there will come a people who will argue with you regarding the ambiguous verses of the Quran. Therefore, debate them with the Sunnah, because the people of the Sunnah are more knowledgeable of the Quran. Rahimahumullah, rahmatullah alayhi ala salaf al hadhi ummah, wa radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in ala sahabata Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported that he was in Sham, meaning this is the area of, uh, of Syria, modern day Syria and so forth, in Jordan, and said, O oh people, you need knowledge before it disappears. And its disappearance is due to the death of its people. Beware bid'ah and being extreme in innovation and follow the way of old, meaning the Salaf. So this affirms for us, Ayyul Ahbab, may Allah bless us and you, this affirms for us the importance of, as we've already established, the Qur uh, uh, following the Qur'an, following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that this is the menhaj of the Salaf, this is what the Salaf were upon. So we don't call ourselves Salafi or what have you for the sake of just uh, establishing a new group or a new sect, because it's, it's not that. But in fact, when a person says they are Salafi, they are calling, that means they have the understanding, they take their understanding of the religion of Islam from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and from the methodology of how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu how they understood the deen and the first three generations, radiallahu ta'ala anhu This is what it means. So it's not to establish a new clique, a new group, or new this, you're with us, you're against us. No, you're either with the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or, or perhaps you have a misunderstanding, or you could be against the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we don't call to ourselves. This is the shahid that I wanted to mention. So in the statement of uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, uh, reported that he was in Sham, and he said, O people, you need knowledge before it disappears, and its disappearance is due to the death of its people. Beware bid'ah and being extreme in innovation, and follow the way of the, the old, the way of the Salaf. So in this uh, ibarah, or the statement of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we find many benefits. The first benefit, he said, O people, you need knowledge before it disappears. So again, shows us how the Salaf put emphasis on knowledge, on ilm. Knowledge fi din fiqh fi din The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man yuridullahu bi khayran yifaqahu fi din Whenever Allah wants good for uh, someone, He gives them understanding of the religion. So adhering to ilm wa ahliya, adhering to knowledge and the people of knowledge, before its disappearance, as Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned, and that this disappearance is that the people of knowledge will die. The ulama will die. They die off. And by the permission and the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in favor of him, subhanahu, that we're able to have the books of the people of knowledge of many of the ulama. But some of the great scholars before, some of their books and their madhabs were lost. Allah did not make it to where there was tawfiq that after their life that people would gain the barakah of their knowledge. And sometimes the ulama, they say that this could possibly be perhaps because of a lack of ikhlas, uh, sincerity to Allah, or a variety of reasons. But some imams, their knowledge was preserved and they left many students who carried that knowledge in books and students who wrote books and passed on the knowledge. And some and may Allah have mercy upon them, did not. And then, Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, beware bid'ah in being extreme in innovation and follow the way of old. So again, this shows us the importance of avoiding bid'ah, and bid'ah is going against the sunnah. Bid'ah was sunnah, they are opposite. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is codified through hadith, literature. 
And bid'ah is that which does not have a, uh, a sanction through the religion. It is not authorized by the Qur'an. It is not sanctioned in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor on the Sabila Salaf of this Ummah, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'een, or Rahimahullah Ta'ala Jami'an. That if we don't find something, for example, there are some innovations in Bid'ah that you'll find that the people innovate that have some aspect of a reference in the religion. But then another aspect of where they deviated is not sanctioned in the religion. For example, if a person says, I'm going to, for example, here's something we see common. And I don't know where our brothers get this from, but we find many of our brothers and some of the masajid that after, after salat, after every salat, they will raise their hands in dua. And no doubt dua is from the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, a dua hu ibadah. That supplication is worship. So this is an act of worship. But is it sanctioned to make dua right after the prayer? And especially to make this a regular practice? We're not saying someone has a hajjah, they have a need, and they supplicate. There's nothing wrong with that. If occasionally you supplicate after, right after salat. But that is not a time that the Prophet والسلام, made his duas. His dua, he, he told us to make a lot of dua during the sujood, when you're closest to Allah. There's qanut of witr. There is a dua uh, in tashahud, after tashahud, al-akhir, the last tashahud in the prayer. You can make dua. There is many other times when dua is, uh, you know, if you're fasting, um, and this is in general. Dua is mashroor. It's, it's legislated to do that. But when you make a specific time, for example, after the prayer, when it's known the Messenger of Allah وسلم, there's many ahadith which illustrate for us that the Prophet وسلم, made dhikr after, after prayer. And then instead, you go right into dua. And you do this every salat. Then this we are afraid that you perhaps could have fallen into religious innovation. Not by making dua, but the making dua at an improper time, in a time when it is uh, legislated and recommended to make dhikr to Allah Azza wa Jal. But instead, here you have done an act of ibadah outside of its uh, proper time frame or in a manner which it was not known. So for example, another example, which might be a bit more of extreme of an example, is that if a person, after, uh, or they say, I want extra ajr. I want ajr from Allah. And all of us want and are in need of ajr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this person says, Fajr to me needs more. I want to pray for rakat. Rakat. A fajr. So they begin to pray for prayer units of uh, uh, for the fajr prayer. Now we know fajr. This is an obligation, and we know from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what's established in the Umm of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that fajr is two prayer units. But if this individual, even if they have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa taala. They've met one aspect of having their deed accepted. They had sincerity to Allah. They wanted khair. They wanted to worship Allah alone. But then they made the fajr prayer four units. That would make their deed not accepted, invalidate, because they didn't follow the second condition for having your deed accepted, which is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that means they would have made a bid'ah. That would be a bid'ah. Why? Because yes, fajr is from the, 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 the it's, it's a prayer, but they didn't follow the fajr, which is known that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ordered us to, to make and that he made alayhi salatu wa That the fajr is known to be two prayer units. The person, even if they want extra good, they have fallen into religious innovation and they have deviated from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and deviated from the madhab of the salaf of this ummah and that's where they fell into innovation. 
So they actually change the nature of the ibadah, although the asal of that ibadah is, is there. The foundation of that, the origin, can be found that there is a thing called fajr prayer. But this person changed the way in which fajr prayer was prayed. And there are many types of religious innovation, and that is not the, this is not the time and the, the place to go into depth about those issues, but we just wanted to make a, uh, a point there. So then the Sheikh said, Hafadhallahu Ta'ala, he said it was narrated by uh, Ubay bin, uh, bin Kaab, radiallahu ta'ala, who said, you must follow the path and the sunnah, because there is not a slave on the earth that is on the path and the sunnah that remembers Allah when he is alone and his hair raises on his skin from fear of Allah, except his example is like the example of a tree whose leaves have dried and likewise it has become dry until a severe strikes it and its leaves fall from it, similar to how Allah removes the sins. Being frugal on the sunnah and the path is better than striving diligently in differing with the path and the sunnah. Therefore, look to see whether if you are frugal or striving with regards to your deeds, that they are on the methodology of the prophets and their sunnah. So this is a beautiful statement of Ubay bin Kaab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that you must follow the sunnah, or you must follow the path and the sunnah. So letting us know that the madhab of the salaf is the best of madhabs. And it is Islam. And the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is Islam. So those people who say that, you know, I follow the Quran, I don't follow the sunnah, they are on extreme falsehood, extreme batil, extreme, they are on an extreme path to zandaka, to heresy and wickedness. Why? Because Allah says, وَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعْتِيُوا رَسُولُ Allah says, follow Allah and the messenger. So if you follow the Quran, then you have to follow the sunnah. Because it's all, anyone who, who says that they follow the Quran, they, they follow the Sunnah, they're either a liar, they're either extremely jahil, or they, they're, or they are a heretic. They, they cannot possibly uh, go outside of those three categories. Why? Because either they are new to the religion and they're totally ignorant, so then they say, I only follow the Quran. Or they are following their desires and they deny the Quran and they are ignorant of what is in the Quran. They just say that from their desires and they don't want to follow the Sunnah. They don't want to follow the rulings and how to understand the Quran. They just want to take the Quran and try to understand it in their own, make their own tafsir, their own way of thinking. This is also incredible, uh, an incredible sickness that we have to be careful of, and it needs a cure. And or they could be ahla bid'a wa zandaka, and go to the the person who makes inkar of the sunnah to that level. Then they actually can leave the religion of Islam because then they are claiming the Quran is lying when Allah says follow Allah and follow His Messenger, and Allah says that all throughout the Quran. There's many ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us, and we mentioned some of them in the beginning uh, of this treaty, so return back to the first lesson. And another faida I wanted to mention about, uh, from the statement of Kaab, uh, uh, of uh, Urbay bin Kaab, radiallahu uh, ta'ala anhu, is when he said that uh, being frugal on the sunnah and the path is better than striving diligently in differing with the path and the sunnah. So therefore, look to see whether if you are frugal or striving with regards to your deeds, that they are on the methodology of the prophets and their sunnah. So we were following the, met the methodology of the NBA. They called it Tawheed. We don't have a new Dawa. We don't have a new Minhaj, a new methodology. We should start calling to this. We should start calling to that. But no, rather, we should call to what the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and First and foremost, to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this shows us to follow the sunnah. And what was one thing that all the prophets alayhim after salatu wa salam that they all had in common? What did what did they all have in common? Let's look at the ayat for the for the answer. قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول لنعبد الله وجتنبوا تعود تعود. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem that we have sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the madhab of the Anbiya, Minhaj al Anbiya, is to call to Tawheed. It's to call to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then our Shaykh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, and maybe we'll end on this statement just to keep it brief. He said it was narrated on Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who said, You must adhere to the path. Therefore, if you follow it, then you have proceeded uh, a very far distance. However, if you diverge from it to the right or the left, then you have deviated extreme deviation. So stick to the straight path. This is the method of the Salaf. And another statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu who he said, which is very relevant for us and shows us that even the Salaf spoke about this issue of ta'asib and this issue of taqlid, meaning blind following and being prejudiced to certain individuals or sheikhs or scholars saying, you know, whatever my sheikh says is the truth. This is false. This is a false criterion. We cannot say that every single thing, that even our mashaykh that are beloved to us, that they don't make mistakes. No, you can't say that. That's very... Serious, because that goes against the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta All the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those mis those sinners is those who make who repent. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, None of you should make taqlid, meaning blind following, another man in regards to his religion. If he, the one being followed, believes, then he believes. And if he disbelieves, then he disbelieves. If you had to f blind follow someone, then take those who have passed away as examples. For indeed, those who are alive are not safe from fitna. That's a beautiful ibarah, a beautiful statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, letting us know that the sibil, the, the minhaj, the methodology of the salaf of this ummah is the best methodology. And that if you're going to blind follow anyone, then blind follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. That this is the path to follow. That it's not even as beloved as our ulama are to us, that they also make mistakes. You see, bu yukhti. And that not every ruling, even if it's about an individual, you may be, maybe it's relevant for you to blind follow the sheikh in that matter because you don't have the ability to, uh, to look for the truth. But you cannot make ilzam on the other people, you know, force the other people to follow your ruling. If you say sheikh so-and-so said, this sheikh is off it now, he's off the sunnah. And you don't, and, and you want to accept that, that, that ruling, There's, that's okay. Because maybe you don't have the tools to go into it. But you cannot make force so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so to accept that ruling, especially if they have the ability to go into the books and see and look at what the sheikh said and, and, and make some uh, uh, some determinations based on ilm or thiq, which they may not be in agreement with the sheikh on that. So you cannot make ilzam of them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from taqlid and protect us from every and all kind of shar. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.